Hi, everyone. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. It's great to be with you today. Uh, we celebrated Easter this last Sunday, and as Christians, we'll celebrate Easter every day of our lives, uh, and certainly every Sunday, the day that he rose from the dead, as we gather uh, as the ecclesia, as the people of God, to praise his name and, and, and to be empowered to live in the resurrection truth. Huh? Um, uh, but but this week especially, we're kind of talking about the uh, re- that resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that that event, and 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 the, the central place of it, and and the certainty of it, uh, uh, and the victory over death, and and so forth. And today, I thought we'd just spend a few minutes uh, with this early creed uh, of of the Christians. Um, it's found in First Corinthians. Uh, it probably uh, there's over, over a great amount of evidence that that indicates that it was written just with a handful of years, if that, uh, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Uh, and then this was something that, that we, I believe, that, that's what a creed is, right? And, and so um, Paul, he, he has this in 1 Corinthians written very, very early. It says, for what I received. So here's this technical language. This was handed down to me. This was a creed. You know, Paul came to faith a little later, right? He was on the Damascus Road. Jesus came to him face to face. This was after Pentecost, and and so, and so he he um, you know he went to Peter, and 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 at that point, James, the half brother of our Lord in the Jerusalem Church, and he talked with them, and and so somewhere along this line, this was handed down to him. This creed was already in existence, see, and this was handed down to him. So he says, "For what I received." I passed on to you as of first importance. So this creed is is the foundational thing. And he's talking to these Christians in Corinth, uh, the city of Corinth, that that uh, he had first brought uh, the good news of Jesus to, right? So, so he says, uh, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. I'm sure this is something that they memorized. You know, th- this creed that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What scriptures? The Old Testament scripture. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. From Isaiah, right? This this. Uh, 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 the, these prophecies that pointed to Jesus as the one who would take their sins away. Uh, so, uh, as a first important, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was put in the tomb, uh, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, uh, uh, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, that that, that it had prophesied that that this G, this uh, the Messiah would would be raised again. Uh, and, and so... Um, and, and then he says, and that he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. And that uh, we didn't, we haven't read that this week. But but uh, on Easter evening, that's what happened. That Jesus appeared to, to the twelve in the upper room, and of course, out of his mouth is peace be to you, right? As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you uh, on on mission right away. Uh, and and so again, this was the the earliest confession of what we believe that Jesus died for our sins and he rose again, and. It, and lots of people saw him, the wit- the eyewitnesses, right? Uh, and, and it wasn't like a one person here, one person there. It was all of them together, the 12. Right? Uh, and then it says here, uh, after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. Uh, most people think this is in Galilee. We, we see this with every, uh, with, with every Easter uh, uh, story in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That go to Galilee, go to Galilee, go to Galilee. And what happens on Galilee? Go to all the world to make disciples. And, and, and most folks would say this is where the 500 were. They saw him and they heard his words. Uh, uh, so five, not now, and, and he says here, um, more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. So most of them were still alive. They could say, well, no, we, we didn't see it. No, 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 most of whom are still living. We still have their eyewitness. They're still laying down their lives saying that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. <laughs> uh, this is this is powerful. Written just maybe, maybe three, four years after the, some say shorter than that to, to the resurrection reality, the, the event. Um, then he appeared uh, to James and to all the apostles. So why is that important, James? Well, if you remember, James was the half-brother of our Lord who didn't believe in Jesus before the resurrection. Remember, he came with the family and, and they they said they were saying Jesus was crazy and they were going to take him away. It said his brothers came. And, and, and so we know James didn't believe in Jesus as the Messiah before the But now he does. What happened? Oh, Oh, he saw him face to face. See, that's what this says. He appeared to James. They, and James was a pillar of the Jerusalem church, the greatest Christian church uh, uh, in, in existence uh, for, for many years, right? 
uh, together with, with Peter, he led that church. Then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one and normally born. Paul's writing this, and, and, and think about how powerful that was. Paul was a persecutor of Christians. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a religious... Uh, he was a religious fanatic in a sense, and, and he would pull these Christians out of the homes. He would throw them in jail some, and kill them, right? Uh, he, he, was, he was way over there, and, and Jesus appeared to him on the road when he was going to Damascus to persecute more Christians. <laughs> uh, the only thing that changed him is that he saw Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ face to face. So, so this, this is the first earliest creed of the Christians. I pass on to you, and Paul is just quoting it. I'm passing this on to you. What I received, this creed that Jesus died for our sins, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and all these people saw him, and I saw him too. And I'm willing, Paul, Paul talking here, I'm willing to give up my life of privilege as a Pharisee of Pharisees. I'm, I'm willing uh, to live as one who follows Jesus and, and to finally be persecuted and die for him because I saw him face to face. This is, this is the creed of the first Christians uh, written just a short time after the reality of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. <laughs> um, so we've passed down to us First things first, Jesus Christ died for the forgiveness of our sins. Uh, through these words and through the witness of these people, uh, Jesus comes to us in a sense face to face by his spirit and whispers to our hearts, it's all true. Uh, the tomb is empty. My words are true. I am who I said I am. I give you life with me now and life forever. And by the way, meet me in Galilee because <laughs> I've got a mission for you. A mission I want to, you to join me on as we look to redeem and restore uh, all people uh, until I come again in all my glory. So w would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, uh, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for uh, touching our hearts by your spirit through this ancient creed and the witness of your people. Uh, we pray, Lord, that we might receive you every day and the joy we have in, in knowing you as the living Christ. And we pray, Lord, that we might uh, follow you on mission, uh, be fishers of, of men, of people, uh, and know the joy of having others have life in you. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, may God be with you. Bye-bye.